Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the Taiko 4 wire Sentry Zone Valve. This zone valve actually has a ball valve on the inside and draws a lot less amperage than the older style 3 wire zone valves from Taiko. Alright, so we're going to take a more in depth look at this. I want to thank SupplyHouse.com for giving us our part to look at. If you're having trouble finding different parts, uh, you might want to give them an opportunity. They have uh, very competitive pricing and fast shipping as well. So this zone valve right here has, if you can make that out, this W slash Y, that's a 24 volts coming in, and then you have the common coming back out. So you're going to wire your hot wire in here and your common wire coming back out. All right, so this would power any time that you are turning the thermostat up. Okay, so you'd have the either this hooked in with the thermostat or you'd be using a zone valve control relay system. All right? Then you have your end switch right here. When this ball valve is completely open, that's when these two right here, these terminals basically are then touching inside and that is your end switch. So this is normally open when this is closed. So it does not want to have the uh, circulating pump pumping water through here when this is closed. So this is giving a signal uh, back to the circulator pump relay in order for it to turn on. So. This right here, you can actually turn right here. You just press this button in, okay, and then you turn it this way. So once again, you press the button in, and there it's closed. Open, closed. All right, so when you are soldering this in, you're going to have this open. And you're also going to have this head off. So you press this button in, and this pops right off. Very, very simple. All right. I just want to make sure that you have this lined up again uh, back on this after you're done. So once you're done soldering this together, you can then just go ahead and press this back in, press the tab in, and then you're locked back in. If you remember the older style ones, you would have to turn like this and then pull up, and that's how they would unlock. This one doesn't have a motor in it. It actually uses a little heater to press this down. This is the older three wire zone valve and this one was drawing 0.9 amps at any point in time all right so if you had the power coming in the common coming out and then the end switch would be between two and three you could power this with a thermostat once again or with a zone valve control relay system and then two and three gives the signal for the circulating pump to turn on after this is completely open what's nice about these is you can also press this in and you wouldn't take it up all the way like this but you just get it above these right here and you can actually rotate this entire thing this way and then press it back in so you can change the head from one direction to the other direction that's not a problem and once again it's just a ball valve so it wouldn't necessarily matter which direction that you flow the water with okay it just gives you this these letters a and b right here but that's that's just uh, for your knowledge there the difference is between this one and this one, you have this motor in here, and this is actually only drawing about half an amp in order to charge up a capacitor, and that may happen maybe anywhere from, say, 10 to 30 seconds. And then the motor is going to go ahead and turn the gears, and it's going to open this ball valve. After it's done opening, the motor shuts off, and you're only drawing a very minimal amount of power, right around about a tenth of an amp. And that's it. Okay? Uh, so when this one's on, the entire time it's on, it's drawing 0.9 amps at 24 volts. This one is drawing about half an amp at 24 volts, and then it ramps down to about a tenth of an amp for 24 volts uh, when this is open. And then when the power is removed from this, so power is removed from the WY, right? Power is removed from there. What happens is the capacitor in here is able to turn the motor in order to shut the zone valve again. Alright, so that's how that works. In order to know how to wire this up, I just wanted to show you with a zone control system right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and slide this over. What's nice about these Sentry zone valves is that you could actually use up every one of these six zones because these don't draw as much amperage as these did. So how you'd wire this is this WY will go to 1 on this zone control relay right here. 
So you have your power, W, Y, going to 1, right here. And then your C, right here, to 2. And then you'd have your end switch. One of your end switch wires would go to 3. The other end switch wire would go to 4. All right, just right here. In the case of a three-wire zone valve, you'd have 1 going to 1, 2 going to 2, and 3 going to 3. And then, in reference to your thermostats, uh, basically, it's just, if you have a non-digital, then you just have a 24-volt signal coming out the R and coming back through on W. That is if your heat is calling. Otherwise, it will stop the 24-volt R at the thermostat, and it won't allow it to come back on the W. Anytime that, that this W receives a 24-volt signal, it's going to go ahead and power the 1 over here. All right, and then it's going to go through the zone valve, and then it's going to come back through the common, which is 2. And then the end switch is either going to be between 2 and 3, such as this, or 3 to 4, such as this. All right, and then this common up here is just to power a digital thermostat between R and C. Anytime this end switch is closed, say in the case of our Taco Sentry zone valve from 3 to 4, or in the case of our three-wire Taco zone valve, our 571 if 2 and 3 were touching then what's going to happen is you would have 120 volts going to the pump end switch all right and then coming out of the pump end switch you'd go to your circulating pump 120 volts so you have to actually take your main 120 volt power coming into one of these screws and then coming out of one of these the other screw is going to the circulating pump that's how this board knows when to power the circulating pump anytime one of these end switches close. Let's go ahead and see our Taco Sentry Zone Valve in operation. So what we have going on is we have our alligator clips on our 24 volt AC transformer and we're checking AC voltage. All right, uh, We have not turned that on yet. Then we have the red wire coming off of here. So you see that red wire is coming down and it's coming back over to the uh, W slash Y. And then you have the common wire which is the white wire and it's coming over to the common. You see that the ball valve is actually in the shut position right now. The power's off, and we have two probes right here in the end switch. And we're going to be checking resistance. So right now, we're over limit. Uh, when that end switch closes, that's when this will read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. When we turn this on, we should see a flashing, and that's when the capacitor is charging inside of the zone valve. And then once it goes solid, we should see uh, this uh, ball valve go ahead and open up and when we shut the power off over here then what's going to happen is the charge and the capacitor is going to go ahead and close the ball valve back in all right so here we go so we're still charging up the capacitor and now the zone valve is opening you see that the light is solid green and now it's open all the way all right now we're going to go ahead and disconnect power and you see we have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Now we're going to disconnect power and we're going to see that go to OL again. And that's how it works. All right, uh, we could go ahead and check an amp draw on this. Uh, we'll turn it on one more time. We'll check an amp draw instead of just voltage and we'll see how we do with that. So you see we have our hot wire, 24 volts going through our AC amp clamp. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check on the amperage, and you're going to know when I plug it in as soon as that light starts flashing. Now, just so you know, since we just turned it on and turned it off, it's not going to take as long to charge the capacitor this time. So right now we have our 24-volt wire right here going through our AC amp clamp, and we're going to go ahead and turn the power on and see what our amp draw is. And you can see when I turn the power on by the LED light being lit. You see we're drawing 0.37 amps right now. Uh, we're charging the capacitor and then now you see that the amperage is going down and the zone valve is completely all the way open. Uh, our amp draw is so small that my multimeter is having a hard time picking it up with only a single wire going through it. Now I could wrap uh, my AC wire around my AC amp clamp a few times in order to get a higher reading, uh, but that's how that works, okay? So we're going to go ahead and shut the power off, and then this will go ahead and close. You see that our end switch right here is 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Our end switch right here 
uh, is now allowing, say, the circulating pump to go ahead and turn on. As soon as I turn the power off and this closes, then this will read OL well again. And there we go. So that's how that works. So it's actually using the capacitor charge in the inside of this head right here to shut the zone valve right here, the ball valve, after you disconnect the power from here. All right, that's how it works. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time on the AC Service Tech channel.